And all of you know it is not easy, that I ended up traveling the world with a career I love and new challenges every day without that college degree, was a result of my mother's relentless nagging, a need to always keep moving forward, a bit of good luck, recovery from a few bad decisions, including a desire to right my educational wrongs, and very hard work. But as, as, for, as informed as I am, as much as I have seen and done, I still feel uncomfortable giving advice, except for motherly counsel, which will never end. Advice to and from strangers has become so prevalent, so easily offered, and tailored for mass appeal. Chase your dreams, find your passion. It's on pottery barn pillows and jewelry and buses, and don't get me started on the social media advice mush. There is nothing wrong with getting up in the morning to seize the day, but being told you will change the world sets a pretty high bar and creates the added stress that you're lagging behind in some perceived race to the top. The fact is that any wisdom I have gained comes from the inspiring people I have had the privilege of meeting and the history-making moments I have had the privilege of witnessing up close. I have seen the sunrise over Kabul with young American aid workers taking unimaginable risk to, under, to educate the children of Afghanistan and watched the moon rise over Baghdad with U.S. soldiers helping voters make their way to the polls. I have stared down our own U.S. Marines who doubted my resilience. I have smoked cigars in the palace of former dictators, have seen shoes hurled at a U.S. president. I have heard howls of pain from the wounded in combat zones, flown home with flag draped coffins at my fingertips, and I have been serenaded at dusk by the crew of a Black Hawk helicopter who thought singing, you've lost that love and feeling, while we flew across the Tigris River would cheer me up after a particularly long day. Every one of those days and nights, I thought how lucky I was to be there, to see the courage of others, to test my own, and to have my family back home that understands why I do what I do. In all of those days, there were lessons to learn. You likely have very different goals and seek very different experiences. There is no single definition of success that is unique to each of you. You are the only ones who can really define success and happiness. But all of the people who I truly admire have attributes in common. They seek a life of learning, asking questions, and making complex judgments both morally and professionally. They do not seek power or wealth, but if they achieve those things, they use it for the good of others. They connect their brain and their heart, which makes them better colleagues, better leaders, better partners, better parents, and better human beings. As you choose opportunities and ideas, the people you work with and those you choose to love, those who animate, inspire, and energize you, will define the quality of your life's experience. Do not waste your time with people who do not help bring out the best in you. And the reverse is true. You have to respect, inspire, and energize the ones who are with you. To do that, you must contribute. I don't say that in some lofty, shoot for the stars, devote your life to the poor kind of way, although that is certainly a noble path. I mean, every day you need to contribute, whether that means to a conversation, a joke, cooking a meal, planning a trip, sharing thoughts from a good book or a good piece of music, finding a new hiking spot or baking pies, contribute. To make your own life richer and those around you, you have to work on it every day. Whatever path you take personally, whether a parent, an adventurer, a writer, or an executive, that personal part of your life should be paramount. Find a way to fit it all in no matter how exhausted you may be, no matter how many times you have to say, of course I would love to work late. Fit in the personal part of your life that matters and do it with energy and enthusiasm.